before that it was ice. Whatever part of the picture I want the brightness exposed for it, it's about the same distance as my sun. I'm excited to potentially buy your old binoculars. Can you come up to Greenwich on October 21st so I could try them out, give them a test drive? Um, is it a weekend? Yeah, I would imagine. So, what, are you counting or something? No, I'm Oh, to the hawk watcher.
good 45 minutes. They, they were first. And you're here with the Cape May Raptor Banding Project, and uh, I'm a volunteer. All the banders here are volunteers. We're basically a volunteer organization. Um, I, like all the other banders, I'm also licensed by the federal government to ban birds of prey. I have a master banding permit from the USGS, the bird banding lab issues them. So everyone here is licensed to do this operation. You can't do that without proper licensing, okay? The weather channel every day for a week and say, ah, front's going through on this Friday. Uh, once that front goes through, the weather will be colder. And all of those birds that are north of here decide to move. And they move because of different triggers, daylight hours, cold weather, uh, and also because the winds are out of the north because they don't want to fly into the wind. So the north winds blow them down the coast. And you come here for a reason. This is a, a hot spot for all kinds of uh, bird banding, birding activities. And why is that? Why do you guys show up here? How come Cape May is so important? The peninsula. The peninsula. Yeah, it's a specific geologic landform, right? It's it's a peninsula. And any band that I use, I have to report back to the U.S. Fish, actually to the USGS, and they keep a database. That database then has all the information that I recorded about the bird's age and sex and its condition and where we caught it and so on and so forth. And other researchers can use that as needed. Um, if you find a bird with a band on it, it, it has a number on it, and we would like you to report that back to the USGS. You can do that online. Everything can be done online these days. You get instant gratification most of the time. They tell you, they'll give you information right while you're sitting there, uh, if they can, if it's been recorded. Uh, kind of thought I might separate these out. Can everybody see this band right here? Yeah. See that one right there? It's hard to see, I know. But uh, who, what do you think that band is for? Pretty small, huh? Kestrel. Uh, a little too small for kestrel. Little sounders. No, yeah, shark fin. Male shark fin hawks, smallest band we use, right? Uh, and to compare that, this band is for a red-tailed hawk. Okay, so quite a bit bigger, right? And then this band is for an eagle. All right, great. So these bands are designed to fit on the bird. The bird's legs are pretty much standard. We know what size they're going to use through research. And these bands are designed to stay on the specific species. So for example, this band just butts together. It's, it's called a butt end band. You just squeeze it together and it stays there. Little male shark, you can't do anything with it. But if you put a band like this on a red tail, he would pull it apart. So these bands are designed to lock on. It has a little lip that pulls over and locks. So the banding, uh, the bands that we use are very highly specific. All right, so uh, we just so you know, we do have uh, standards for, for handling these birds. You know, we don't just keep birds overnight or any length of time. We're very careful to keep them only a brief period so we can show them to you uh, and release them in a healthy way. Um, this bird is getting very nervous, so we're going to pull him out. Anybody have any idea which what this is? Any idea what this is? Sharpie or coops. Sharpie or coops, right. So let's pull out. All right, here we go. We're going to we'll do this quickly, but you guys, um, you can take pictures. That's okay. Uh, we will, I'll, uh, I'll try and make sure. 